does Rasta, whatever ones might want to say that means, but does Rasta come from Hinduism? It's a subject matter right here, subject matter. Some say this is popular on some social media platforms, Rastafarian, Hinduism, or some sort of a connection, whether real or imagined, you know, perceived or somewhat imperceptible. <laughs> but I like the real or imagined. Is there really a connection with the roots of Rastafari? And what is called uh, Hinduism or India, the connection there is India, the Hindus Kush. Hindus Kush, Hindus Kush. A lot of pseudo around Hindus Kush. We need to do our research, brothers and sisters. But I know many ones and ones, when I first heard about this, and I have to thank um, Aina's sister wife. You know, she had picked up something, I think it was Sarnetta and Garfield. Yeah, we heard that right there. Interesting, you know, about who ones and ones, what sort of debates ones and ones wanted to see but i think a good discussion a good presentation you know we need to look forward for some presentations and need to have some real presentations from an objective from an objective perspective because subjectively speaking many ones and ones will say i say subjectively and somewhat ignorantly when i say ignorant we're not saying stupid or nothing like that we're not name calling nobody but there are many ones and ones in the public because not really much is known of the real roots of Rastafari, right? which is Ethiopia, right? And that whole Judeo-Christian, you know, aspect. And then even deeper than that, how the roots, how deep the roots really go and the connectivity. Now, is there influence? People may want to say, well, what about influence? I think there was an article on, um, I think it was a Ghana, Ghana, the website, I have to bring that up as we expand on this particular reasoning. Hopefully we can just vibes on this particular subject matter. Does Rasta, do Rasta come from Hinduism? Does Rasta come from Hinduism? What about the influences? Now, usually it's a lot of the surface. There's a lot of the surface um, subject matter, surface issues, sub surface um, conversations, which do have a connection. We're not saying that, look, the sad Jews have, have what ones might say is dreadlocks and, and, and look at the Rastafari, you know, in Jamaica. A lot of emphasis is given on the origin of um, Rastafari and, and Jamaica. Now, on a certain level, we do have to say that the Rasta and the Rastaism on a certain level is heavily connected with Jamaica, but that's not the real roots of Ras Tafari. Hope ones and ones over is what we're saying. Ones understand. You know, those who can understand, those who can overstand as well. Right? But first of all, just let's get a good standing on these subject matters. Right? There's some obvious differences. Right? What about the cannabis? You know, what about marijuana? Look the marijuana. Marijuana come from India. That's what people want to say, right? Well of course we know what the um, not just archaeology, history, certain other proofs show that within that civilization that does have a connection with, you know, the Afro-Asian, um, Afro-Shemitic, as one would say, connection, you know, between these peoples and these cultures. But once we zoom in on one particular, we can say, aspect of the culture or one particular denomination, do all, do Hindus have dreadlocks some do you know some do and 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 some don't now the particular group known as the sadhus is often you know heavily connected from a european and gentile perspective but what's often missing what's often missing is the roots of rastafari right and who is the rastafari and that when we say rasta and we say Rastafari, these two are not mutually, um, you know, inclusive. <laughs> you know, inclusive. You know, in other words, one does not always refer to the other, but one is the origin, right? And the other is a byproduct. So we're saying that the Rasta, 
right? Generally speaking, especially in the West, in the West, out here in the West, as scripture even says, and yes, we're going to point to the scripture, but first of all, this is not a biblical, you know, in fact, even a lot of ones who might call themselves Rasta, you know, would probably also agree with the point about Rasta and Hinduism and India and the cannabis and the dreadlocks. They, you know, many ones, you will go by what is placed before them because it seems, it seems so. You look at this and you say, boom, the point is made. Even this particular still right here, you see, and this is why we got this one here to kind of present this as a kind of an opening of a further dialogue and a reasonment. And watch how many ones might, might hit up the comments and say, yes, Rasta, India, that's exactly. We had this conversation with um, Captain Zania. I think the Captain 10,000. Then that's how the titles go. ISUPK on Ross Lawrence, Brother Lawrence Davis podcast. What you know about God and his chosen people. We had that discussion. You know, I coming from a Rastafari Israelites, Rastafari Jews, Lion of the Tribe of Judah perspective, and Captain Azania, you know, ISUPK, you know, the Israeli, the Israelite school of universal practical knowledge, you know, and we, we had more in common, actually, you know, as I'm a Rastafari who points to the real roots and connects to the real roots of Rastafari so we can, you know, reason, dialogue, and converse on subject matters concerning the Bible and the true perspective that reflects right, our namesake, that reflects the namesake, Rastafari. We're one of the first Rastafari to begin to really clarify right, and disseminate in the public spheres right, over 20 to 30 years now right, that Rastafari according to the roots of Rastafari, doesn't mean head creator. That's like half correct. And we brought forward the other half, right, of the narrative, the other half of the story, the other half of the etymological and linguistic fact, getting into the linguistic science, right, that Ras does mean head or in a title sense of a chief or like a noble, so to speak. But Tafari or Teferi, Teferi, right, means the one to be reverenced, the one to be respected, Teferi. And then we have Fetari, Fetari. But see, that's getting into the Amharic, the linguistics of the King of Kings. That's getting into the other half of the story. That's not something that is very, you know, popularly known. In fact, even ones and ones are still beginning to catch up on that because there's been a great kind of uh, dissemination of other perspectives. Some say, well, it's, it's Judaism. Rastafari influences Judaic influences. And ones can do this when they avoid the real roots of Rastafari. Is Rastafari is a name that's familiar with many, right? Familiar with most and with many. But it's really only understood or as you would say, understood and overstood by a few, right? In spite of the information there, you can only take the horse, as they say, to the water. You can't make one's drink, right? You can only give one's the data, you know, the knowledge, the information, right? But you really can't make one's think. People are going to think the way they think, right? So when we show the Saju, Right? And the Rastafari brethren right there, people automatically make a connection right there because Rastafari speaks of historically, right? S speaks of, but let's, let's define Rastafari, right? We just said that the origin of Rastafari is Ethiopia. The origin of Rastafari is Ethiopia. And we're not just speaking of only the name, but the name is the, it's the name, the name, the name. Hakadosh, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, Baruch Hashem, the name, the name, the Shem, the Shem, the Shem, it's all about the Shem, who is really in the true Shem, in the true name, right, and also who is representing the true glory, the true namesake, you know, even the script speaks about taking a name in vain. All right, so Rasta is Rasta is a byproduct, and we're not going to say that Rasta is just just all bad. 
You know, somebody says Rasta is all bad because there are some things that are not quite Rastafari, right? Amongst many ones and ones who might claim, say, or accept the name Rasta. One might say, you're a Rasta. And it all depends who I'm speaking to. I might acknowledge to a degree, but hopefully seek to clarify more of the real reality, right? Of who I be, right? So there's a verse in the scripture that speaks about as the as the lightning, the son of man, the son of man talking about like the second coming, the second advent, Christ in the second adventure, the king, Christ in his kingly character, this biblical prophetic aspect, right? Connected with, right? Rastafari, the man Rastafari. As our namesakes say that man is not emanated from a deity, but the deity divinity that emanates from Rastafari, right, is as that lightning, right, from the east, right, from the east, look to the east, that shines to the west. Now, as we look to the east, we see a lot in the east. You see Africa from this perspective is in the east. You see Ethiopia is in East Africa, right? We see the Levant and Arabia, Queen of Sheba lands. We keep going forward. Ancient Babylon, Sumer, Cad, Kalna, right? And Elam, and then we have India, right? And then later on comes this terminology, Hindus Kush. Look it up, look it up, brothers and sisters. Now, head up to the artists, you know, to our artists, the creatives. Right, the artists. Now people say, well, see this right here, this proves, right, this kind of lotus right here, right? This proves that Rasta right comes from Hinduism. I think that's a kind of a faulty understanding, right? And kind of a kind of a dumbing down of culture and spirituality. Right? Because not all Hindus are sages. Mm-hmm. Let me let me repeat that. Not all Hindus are sages. But heal up to the artists. We're not dismissing this art. We're not saying that this art is expression. Right? It's expression, you know? It's it's a, it's an artistic expression, right? But it's not exclusively sadhu, right? And one may say, well, it is Indian, right? Are we condemning that particular culture? Right? It's not even to condemn that particular culture. But to take apart some of these things and to put them in proper order, that to say Rasta is not um, synonymous with, with saying Rastafari. That's the way many ones and ones be naive and been made to believe, right? And there tends to be a lot of ignorance, even when we heard Sarnetta and Garfield and it was brought up, Garfield brought it up, you know, concerning Rasta coming from Hinduism or whether the Hebrew connection, so forth and so on. But it seems like more was kind of said, you know, on this kind of Indian and Hindu connection. I think he said this is a popular, you know, subject matter, right? So we get to the roots. Even this man here, Gangangaru Mara, this was a pen name that he used, Gangangaru Mara. And ones would say, well, that's an Indian, that's a so-called East Indian name. One thing that we have to put into perspective, and we'll get into this as we expand this hopefully reason and subject matter, is that yes, many of our intellectuals, scholars, visionaries, um, reverends, and I want to heal up Reverend James Morris Webb, who was the first one to prophesy, right, that that black man born there, right, in him you will find the Redeemer concerning Rastafari that Marcus Garvey later on would um, would adapt and adopt and get more of the universal credit, you know, for, especially in the Rastafari. They say it all began with what um, Marcus Messiah Garvey said, right, at the beginning of some say the Rastafarian movement. Some will say Rastafarianism. Some will say Rasta. Very few will say Rastafari as one word. But when you go to Rastafari as one word, the root of that is the man, the Rastafari. So besides the dreadlock point, because one will say, well, the dreadlock point, where did they get the dreadlocks from? Have you studied dreadlocks in ancient cultures? When I say ancient cultures, academically, I'm speaking over, well, ancient is defined as anything 1,500 years, so roughly 500 um, um, 
A D or C E would be considered like you know one thousand five hundred years, fifteen hundred years ago would be considered academically, academically. So how old is ancient, academically speaking, you know? But if we look at other cultures, right, we find dreadlocks, what was called dreadlocks, right, among other cultures, right? Many um we could say African cultures, even here in the Americas amongst the native you know, the Native Americans that are pseudonymously called Indians and were pseudonymously called Indians. Remember, Christopher Columbus, he was allegedly right, seeking a new route to India, and then he finds his way over here, and then they say that's the reason why they call it the West Indies, because it was in the East Indies. He was going to the East Indies, some say, allegedly, but he actually ended up over here in the West Indies, so, so notice that is an Indian connection. So is the West Indies Indian? Is the West Indies Hindu? I mean, the name West Indies, it is called, historically speaking, people say the Caribbean now, but there's a lot of verifiable historical data that points to the context that still calling it the West Indies is um, legally, lawfully, historically, factually correct right so that's a connection with the entire west indies and also the the caribbean's connection with the americas and then note this as well the people over here in the americas were called what <laughs> right they was called the so-called american indians and then also there's also indians or ones they call indians right native peoples who they call indians even in the Caribbean, the Arawak, the uh, Garifa, you know, I mean, there's, there's so many different native peoples, right, that are connected. And some of them, right, also within Native Americas and Caribbean, West Indies culture here in the Americas, both grow dreadlocks. I'm going to prove that to you, as well as use what is called marijuana today. I mean, where do we get our marijuana today from over here in the Americas? Right? I know some of you are getting from the dispensary, right? But but where? Where? Popularly, historically, even the name marijuana. What's the etymology of the name marijuana? Mary and John, the witnesses of the crucifixion. Mm-hmm. Cannabis matrix, cannabis matrix, y'all. Marijuana, right? Marijuana, right? That's, 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 that's uh, Mexico. Mexico, Mexico. So a lot of marijuana grows over here. Did they wait? Did the, did the Mexicans get marijuana from the Indians? Hmm? Did they? So you're talking about a couple of, um, or, or several hundreds of, of, of Indians, because the British ruled over, you know, India and all of that, that Raja, the Raja history and all that and everything. And wherever the British went in Africa, South Africa, different parts of Africa, they brought some of the, the willing conquered peoples with them. Like they brought the Indians into the Caribbean, the East Indians and so forth and so on. Okay, so now there's a double now India connection. But you see how a lot of it is factually pseudo. It's based on the European. It's based on white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. It's based on the European mindset. So a lot of what's being accepted as truth is being spun through a kind of a European sieve, like a sif, a sieve, you know? Like, you know, when you, um, with grain, I don't know if ones know about that, but not to get all in that, but it's coming from a European or whitewash. I call this a whitewash perspective because note how always the roots is being left out, right, of Rastafari. Even concerning the divinity of His Imperial Majesty, Gurumawi Nagusinagas, Kedamah Halasalasi, Mawan Besazem Negede. Yehuda, Nagusa Neges, Zet Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Halas Lassie the first, weep not behold. Yeah, you know, Rastafari was already, how should we put this, regarded as being within the divine, biblical, prophetic revelation coming from Ethiopia. We have this documented and recorded prior to and apart from any influence 
of the same in the Caribbean, the West Indies, or in the Americas. In fact, right, many were Rastafari who are not called Rastafari, but their belief right, in the man, in the movement, in the divine mission, and a lot of them didn't have dreadlocks either. Like we just pointed to over here, Leonard Percival Howell, Gangangaru Mara, right? And that's, a, that's an Indian name, right? But like we said, many of our scholars already made the black connection, right? With Kush, with Ethiopia, right? With the Ethiopias, right? And with India. And we know that ancient India was a black civilization, right? We have the historical evidence for that. When I say, when we say black, it doesn't mean that it's other, not other peoples, right? Because you have to remember that when the world was under black influence, just generally speaking, when the world was under black influence, we did not have these, these um, mental insanities, these racial mental disorders. You know, white so-called supremacy is a mental insanity. It's a, it's a mental disorder. Mind is a disorder. And this disorder also affects a lot of debates and scholarship that goes on today. A lot of this mental disorder, right? That's why we pointed out the whole West Indies connection with Columbus. So now they call the Indies and then they call the people they came across the Indians. And then in North America, they call them the Indians. But actually, he was going to East India. You know what I'm saying? But check this out. Over here in the Americas, marijuana grew. Now they say, well, from research and everything, some point to some ancient origins of marijuana, like in the Middle East area. What the hell is the Middle East? The Middle East is a terminology that was invented by World War II reporters, news reporters. Before World War II, that region was not called the Middle East, right? We like to call that region, you know, Afro Asia. Ethiopia, right? Afro Asia, because that you know the Asiatic black man, Afro Semitic, Afro Shemitic, that whole connection, right, is pre European colonization. And not just colonization of these territories that he took over overtly, but even after he left, he still his ideas remain in the mind. And you'll find that a lot of the intellectualism, right, pseudo and otherwise is, is based on this. All right, marijuana, all right? They say, oh, that comes from India, but why do we have this so-called thing in America with marijuana and Mexico? Did the Mexicans get that from India? Can you prove that the Mexicans had to wait to get that from India? Did other cultures in the Americas use marijuana? Did other cultures in the Americas have dreadlocks? What about the Buffalo soldier? Now, curry, curry is interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But ones have to be weird that something that becomes popular in one culture is totally missing from other cultures. That's often um, a very um, false way right, of doing historical research and verification. And it, what about the spirituality? Right? The spirituality. Right? There's a spirituality of Rasta. I would say that for many nowadays rosters, I say nowadays rosters, this generation, the, the generation Z, right? Is it generation X, Y, Z, the generation X, Y, Z rosters. You know what I mean? There is a lot of what might be called um, Indian or Hindu influences. Yes, popularly speaking. But that's also a matter of education. That's a matter of discipleship. That's a matter of, um, you know, study to show yourself approved. You know, that's a matter of you shall know the truth. You know, that's a matter of education being a vital key, right? And because of lack of education, some things are properly accepted, right? That with education, once find out that they are not as true, they're not true, right? Either not as true or some things are absolutely not true, right? But just been the way that we've been made to believe. And because of lack of other information, when we speak about how Rastafari was looked at in divine, a theological, and actual real world sense, right, from Ethiopia, right, called Abyssinia by the foreigners, right, and Africa from that time, 
even amongst ones in America, before it became this movement of Rasta, called Rasta. Now, the same thing they do with the Mau Mau. I don't know if you know the Mau Mau, right? The Mau Mau. What do you know about the Mau Mau, right? Look at this picture right here. Before we get to the Mau Mau, right? On the Wikipedia page, there's some write-ups on dreadlocks. And it's kind of good in some cases because a lot of time these Wikipedia pages, because of a certain kind of academic um, verification standard, right, that when they present certain views, right, one can dispute it with other scholars, writers, authors, researchers who are presenting other data so that at least the public and people who are reading it can see, well, some think this, this is the reason why this is a related resource, and others think that, and this is a related, so ones can decide for themselves. But this particular Native American, right, okay, you know, there's a whole Native American and Native movement among black people. Are black people aboriginal? Are we indigenous? to even these regions, right? Did, did um, enslavement actually go in a reverse direction than what we've been told and taught? But my point about this particular picture is notice his dreadlocks. Notice his dreadlocks, right? So there were dreadlocks in the Americas, Buffalo Soldier in the heart of America, right? Buffalo Soldier. <laughs> See, there's... There's more than half the story that still has not been told, brothers and sisters. You know, that's why they try to pigeon ones and ones on some of these other subject matters. Oh, Rasta, you know, does Rasta, does, do Rasta come from Hinduism? Is the origin of Rasta Hinduism? I would say that amongst those who are self-professed Rastas, right, and have not really grasped the roots of Rastafari, grasp and accept it. You know, and that's his message, it's what I accept and follow. Like, grasp and accept it are influence, and there are influences of it. But that's not the origin. Something being influenced by something and something originating with something is two different points. You know what I mean? I might be influenced by your family. When I go to your family house, but I did not originate. From there. I might adopt some things because I say, well, this worked better than something that I might have had in my house. Or maybe I was taken from my house when I was very small. You know, so maybe a lot of things in your house, you're doing it because actually your ancestors got it from my old house. But this is before I was born. So I don't know nothing about that. But here's another point right here. See some of the Native Americans right here with dreadlocks? Mm-hmm. This is one of the great things about Daniel's prophecy where it says they shall go to and fro and knowledge shall increase and modulation and demodulation, science, scientific, prophetic, you know, um, prophecies, right, within the scriptures, right? But even a Native American connection, is there a Native American connection with black people? Yeah, and, and in a two to threefold way. Right, some of our Hebrew Israelites and some of us see and identify some Native American Israelite connections. Others identify black people as having aboriginal connections with the Native Americans. So that would that mean that we would have dreadlocks, what they call dreadlocks, apart from the Sajus of India? Will we not? We would have dreadlocks apart from the Sajus of India. Right. If it's true that some of our people are from Aboriginal stock, I can even point to some Aboriginal stock, Blackfoot, within myself or my paternal or my father's line and lineage, mother's side, Geechee, Gullah. You know, but that being that right there, if we just identify with those roots and we all know about the Geechee and the Gullah people, right, who beat the United States Army and, in the, you know, in that war. Right, the the Gullah, the Gullah and the Gala Wars, right? The Gullah Wars. Look up the Gullah Wars. You know what I'm saying? It was blacks, right, that were formerly enslaved, that were breaking free, freeing themselves up, almost like black maroons, so to speak. Right? Along with some of the native, right? Some of the native peoples, right? Some people call like the blacks and the reds. 
That's how sometimes they refer to it. You know, that's interesting because the same terminology or similar terminology is used over in the East. But the blacks and the reds got together against the pale face, the pale face, you know, the white man who spoke with forked tongue and got together and fought a series of battles against the United States Army and won. And this is why the Geechee Gullah culture right, has been preserved and has a lot of ancient roots you know, was preserved, where they were wiped out, where a lot of our identity was white. You know, How to Make a Slave, Willie Lynch paper speaks about that, you know, even controlled language. But because we were able to, because we stood up, our ancestors got up and stood up and fought, right? And also allied with other peoples that some would say, well, Israelites, and some would say are already related to us because they are those black people that were already indigenous and over here from before. Right? So either way, we would have right, the so-called Buffalo Soldier. Right? We would have that dreadlock. <laughs> I don't know whether we use the term Rasta. Rasta might mean something. We know it means something in India. And see, that's where a lot of people go off of, that Rasta. But Rasta is an artificial abbreviation right, of the title and name Ras Tafari. And Ras Tafari does not mean head creator. That is half correct. All right, Ras Iodonis brought out the half of the story, LOJ Society, right? And still is ministering this truth that Ras means head or prince and Teferi, right? Also self, Ras can mean self within the linguistics of the African Semitic language of Amharic and Teferi, Right, which is translate transliterated as tafari, right? Tafari mean one to be reverenced, one to be respected. Fetari means creator. Right? See, this is what you get from research. See, that's getting to the roots, the real roots of Rastafari. So the whole dreadlock idea when they try to tell you, well, the dreadlocks uh, that come from India. India. We should ask them to see how well their knowledge is, their research is, how strong their research is, or how pseudo it is. India, which India? Which India? Hmm? You're talking about the Indians? And when we say the Indians are native, the native Aboriginal people, the native people in the Americas. We're talking about Americas, North America, right? and Canada, but North America and South America. And the Caribbean, known as the West Indies, because allegedly Columbus was lost. Right? So we see this right here. We see the dreadlocks right here. Don't we see the dreadlocks right here? And we know that black man's here, right? And black people's hair can can easily right, begin to form dreadlocks. Most black people's hairs. Right? You know, without much. Look at this right here. He, he has a he has the, the, the dyed locks, <laughs> right? Like the white locks right there, the ancient locks, right? Uh, Why is it dyed? It, perhaps he's, he, he, he's ancient. He does look ancient, you know, but he looks ancient and young right here, right? So I take that back, you know, Yukrita, Slicha, right? Salakia, you know what I mean? Because these people also, according to many of our people, right, have, are Israelite related. All right, so the first Rasta, why is he called the first Rasta if Rasta is an abbreviation of Ra the two-part name? Notice it's Ras Tafari. Tafari or Tefari is a name. To take the Te off of it and to add it to the Ras is against the African Shemitic language of the, of the namesake of our namesake, but we didn't know that. Our people didn't know that. You know, every, everything in the West is kind of chopped down, abbreviated, you know, because, um, you know, uh, capitalism, right, is the culture, is the real culture of, the, of these Gentiles, of these nation states, you know? So they call him the first, the premier Rasta right there. Th this makes my point right here, mm -hmm. that based on him and, and he having an Indian or uh, East Indian pen name, Gangunguru Mara. But notice he doesn't have dreadlocks. He, he's clean face. He don't have beard, right? You know, whether he can grow one or whether he just did not have one. Don't, don't know about that right there. This comes a little close to the truth, how the religion, now they call us a religion, 
right? Others say way of life, right? Notice what is, who and what is Rastafari? Rastafari is the precarnation name, right, of the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the elect of God, Haile Selassie the first, right? Katamawi Haile Selassie, right? Now they say here that his, his name at birth was Rastafari Mekonan. This is wrong from this Rasta um, slide right here. This is wrong. Right? His birth name was Tafari. Right? His Tafari Mekonan or Lij Tafari. As we say, the man child, Revelation chapter 12. Right? Lij Tafari. Right? Ras became a title. Right? Circa, what was it, 1914, between 1914 and 1916. Right? That time. That the, even the Jehovah Witness says that God, see, Christ secretly would return into the world. The Jehovah Witness had a prophecy at that time. Many ones and ones who were Jehovah Witness or are, you know about that 1914 prophecy. I think it's circa 1916. Right? When the, that man child, Lich Tafari, identified with Revelation chapter 12. Now, when we say that Rastafari, this, this um, divine persona, this, this, this prophetic, biblical, spiritual, Christ-connected revelation was already in Ethiopia, right? Many will dispute it, even the Jamaica page where they have the interview of His Majesty where they say the Oswald Hoffman, they say he denied being Christ and all that, blah, 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 right? Even there they say that the, the narrator made a categorical error, going said millions of Ethiopians. We can prove that it was millions of Ethiopians or many, many Ethiopians. We can't count all the ones, but we have even right in front of us right here, Crown Prince Ras Teferi Mekonen in parentheses, Katamari Hadassalase, we have this, there's some very good books that are kind of hard to find, Prowess, Piety, Politics by Gebra Xavier Elias and Rodolf K. Molvayer, right, of page uh, 415, right, Haile Selassie, right, Rastafari, Tafari is a gospel that can save all, right, and what's interesting is that this is actual, going back to the 19... We have the here, I think this is the Ethi September 1924, something from September 1924. And here we have 1921 GC, if that's the Gregorian calendar. If the GC is Gregorian calendar, that was 1921 in our hands, right? These are all like odes and churchical prayers and, and, and like almost like odes and almost like kind of like sonnets or you know, um, that are in praise, right, of this man-child, right, and even that connection of him, right, with Christ, with a Christ-like, you know, so that's what we say, that we say that it wasn't like people tell you, they'll say that, oh, in Jamaica, and it's these rosters that, that made him like God or like Christ-like, no, it actually wasn't, it was others saw it, because he was seen there first, before that lightning, right, that, that struck and came from Ethiopia before, before it flashed from the east out here to us in the diaspora here in the west, right? And that's the, you know, that's the truth, you know, of the matter. You know, now, now this, this sort of uh, slide right here, you know, even though sometimes we as some of the elders, they say, when they say Rastafari and, we say Rastafari, and what? Rastafari, it's Rastafari, right? If it's and, it's and we the black people, but it's Rastafari, you know? So we get off on that right there, you know? Because it is a point, it's like Rasta is an abbreviation from Rastafari, right? And anybody know, even in the West, that it's not the same. One is, you know, the, the original, and then the other one, is like a byproduct, all right? It's a byproduct. Because in Pearl Massey, Hala Selassie said something. He said that sometimes not, not every seed, right, bears the desired fruit. It's something that he had said, right? So even that seed of Rastafari, which came to the West, and we say first, Reverend James Morris Webb, 
before Marcus Garvey, Reverend James Morris Webb, just to connect with the Buffalo Soldier, you know what I mean? And also that black American, right? Roots connection with Ethiopia, right? And what was called later on Ethiopianism. I don't know how many ones talk about Ethiopianism. Nobody's been talking about Ethiopianism. What's the real roots of what's called Ethiopianism, right? That's why the Ethiopian World Federation was one of the first, those members and those black people to say that we, the black people of the world, this was 30 years, right? About 30 years before black became popular in the sense of black is beautiful and even black power with Stokely Carmichael. He's the one who really resurrected that. Right, because he still had a lot of our people down south under the Canaanite curse. Right, had a lot of our people under the Canaanite curse. Now you see the Mau Mau right here, the Mau Mau connection. Right, the Mau Mau connection. So this shows you. This is a good one here. Here you see Little Wayne with his dreadlocks. Right, I think the one in the center at the top right there is a Saju. Right, it's one of the Saju priests. You see the sister over there with her locks right there. You see um, Jomo Kenyatta and, and our Mau Mau brother right there. Then you see Burhana Selassie, a.k.a. better known as Robert Nesta Marley or popularly called Bob Marley. You see him right there. So you, you see these different ones, right? Even the connection between the Africa connection, right? And the India connection, right? So here we have the Mau Mau freedom fighters with their dreadlocks, right? So it's interesting that ones and ones, I even pointed this out to um, Captain Azania, Captain over 10,000, ISUPK, on what you know about God and his chosen people. In fact, ones and ones want, want to check it out on the Anchor FM platform. Right? What you know about God and his chosen people, I think look for Ross Lawrence Davis, Brother Lawrence Davis connection with that. It's up there, you know, it's a radio kind of a podcast that we did a couple of years back, you know, for a, a good time. You know, it was, it was interesting, you know, and what we found out is that although the ISUPK and some Israelites don't agree with us and our connection with Haile Selassie in Ethiopia. There's many of us, right, who do agree with the, the core, right, the core teaching of who we are as once lost, now found people. Because this is the, what I got, right, in my New Jerusalem school, you know, of hard knocks, you know, growing up, you know, trotting and growing in Rastafari. You know, some of the elders even proclaimed that Rastafari is the Israelites. You know, we're those Israelites people. How we got in this, you know, because we broke the covenant, you know, and we came under this time of the Gentiles, you know, and ones were able to make biblical and scriptural connection, right, to our reality, right? And then we just kept it moving, you know, we tried and forward. So the Mau Mau connection is one that ones often avoid because he mentioned the India Rasta comes from, you know, like he had this point and he was going to drop it on us. Rasta come from Hinduism, you know. And we pointed out the Mau Mau, just, just, just for example, right? And that shows the ignorance of a lot of our people because they'll see the Sajus, right, of India and automatically they'll make boom. That's, that's the Rastafari connection. But even they will, they will overlook the Bahitawi connection in Ethiopia. When I say Bahitawi, Bahitawi, someone say Bahitawi, Bahitawi, one's a positive, Bahitawi, 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 Bahitawi. This is like the, uh, an ascetic, right? We could say a kind of a, um, a orthodox, right? Or Ethiopian orthodox, Tawahedo, a Christian ascetic, a Christian ascetic, right? Who grows locks and kind of separates himself. It's similar to in a biblical scriptural, scriptural sense, like the Nazarene. Right? It's like that Nazarene, you know, that whole Nazarene connection. So right here, 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 brothers and sisters, you can see on the screen, Rastafari Israelites about to begin soon right here, here, here. Had to touch on this just briefly right here. Now, with Europeans or white people, a lot of the white people and the dreadlocks, that's a popular theme, whether white people should have dreadlocks or whether it's cultural vulturism or misappropriation, this, that, so forth and so on. We find that something similar to dreads or dreadlocks in many different cultures. This is our main point, 
So why we had to fly all the way over to India from Jamaica when many of native peoples, even over here in the Americas, also had locks or dreadlocks, you know? I'm sure to some of the Europeans, they might have just seemed like just types of braids. They wasn't using that terminology. So we won't find that like in ancient writings or whatnot. You know, we have locks and maybe the descriptors, even in the Bible, we have it in Song of Songs, where it describes the locks of like King Solomon and Bushy, you know, Bushy, like Bushy here. You know what I mean? And we can see that. This whole subject matter now is when the white or European people, they they see what they see in Rastafari and what those of us once lost now found, black people with that connection with Ethiopia, you know, and we Ethiopian Hebrews, royal order, what we see, right, is two different things. There are some similar things, but there's all there's a whole cultural, um, spiritual like it talks about the the, the two the two olives, right? The natural one the natural olive right, that can be broken off from its own tree and grafted in again, and the wild olive, right, but the roots, right, it's about the roots, right, so we the black people are the roots, this is also Africa right here, East Africa, right, in East Africa, the same region that the man and that name Rastafari comes from, that's where Rastafari comes from, and notice how ones would avoid that, the Mau Maus, I mean, look at the, the whole Mau Mau connection, if there was any more logical connection of why these men that, that were Rastafari, right, or, and who were called Rastas, now become beardsmen and dreadlocks men and also be professing, right, revolutionary, right, ideas and ideals. You see the whole connection? Boom. You, you, you got the whole connection historically, right? The connection of Africa, the freedom fights. You know, and the fighting for freedom, the liberation, the music, the culture. You know what I mean? And we cannot say that cannabis is only found in India. So let me ask the question. So they, they never had no cannabis in, in Africa, right? So, so at the time when Rastas or certain Rastafari started to utilize cannabis, you know what I mean? More in their spirituality. It wasn't there in Africa in any black culture since they promoted black culture. Of course, India would have had a connection, of course, to black culture, but not exclusively and definitely not primarily with either the dreadlocks or even the marijuana. We already proved the marijuana over here in the Americas, right? Also the dreadlocks here in the Americas, you know, and also the Israelite connection right here in the Americas and also the Aboriginal connection here in the Americas. Now, are there influences? As we mentioned from the beginning, of course, there's always influences, you know, whether good and beautiful or, or bad and ugly or, you know, whether yay or nay, but there's always influences, right? But to say that the roots of it and not to inform the audience that there is a distinction between what is properly called Rasta right, and Rastafari, the roots of Rastafari, right? And we notice that his Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie, did embrace certain spiritual principles that were found, right, amongst the Indians or the East Indian people because there are certain spiritual principles that are universal. This is what we're seeking to make with the whole dreadlocks, you know, and even the cannabis point, you know. Now, there's others who, who, who um, you could say, might reflect these things in their teachings, you know what I mean? And we can see, yeah, you make this connection here, you say, boom, you see, that's, he's a Rasta and he got that from him. As though there was not the peace pipe, you know, the peace pipe. We'll get into more details here, this Prof. I, Rasta Liberty. You know, so there is more than one kind in my father's house. There are many mansions. You've heard that before, right? Well, it's true here. In my father's house, there are many mansions. You know, so there are some who are more of the Rasta and some of the influences from Eastern or Hindu or Indian culture, you know, do come into the equation, as we can see here in some expressive word art. 
right? Not to be dismissive, you know, of this word art, right? This particular spirituality. Now, much can be said from a Hebrew or Israelite perspective, right? But this is not what we're talking about exclusively here. It's basically saying is Rasta from Hindu, Hinduism, right? If the dreadlocks and the cannabis, right? Now the name Rasta means something in India. I want to point that out. Rasta, right? Means something. But Rasta, right? Is not Ras Teferi. Anybody who understands, it's like, like if I say George Wash, right? George Wash. Is George Wash George Washington? Are these two names the same? Are we speaking about the same person? We could be, right? But we might not be, right? But if the person's name first was George Washington, and then they started calling him George Wash, right? And what they were showing you as George Wash was different than what you knew George Washington as, then you might get the idea right here. That's the central idea. Now, not even to get into the, the, the black and the Ethiopian connection with the region that is called um, India or pseudonymously, in a pseudo sense, Hindus Kush. Hindus Kush is like a latter terminology, you know, that has to do more with Afghanistan and where certain marijuana actually came from in the, like that Afghanistan region beyond the mountains, the Hindus Kush. That's a whole other interesting connection right there. You know, from the east, as we look to the east, but we're over here in the west. So with the rise of the Rastafari, so within Rastafari, right, and amongst Rastafari is the Rasta, right, liberty with influences from other spiritualities. But the roots of Rastafari, right, strictly speaking, right, according to our namesake, has that Judeo-Christian roots, right? And even those roots have even, as we would say, deeper, you know, deeper roots, you know? Some speak about evolution, right? As far as a spiritual evolution, you know? This is what humanity, you know, in its supreme aspiration to return. If man, according to even the Bible or some interpretations, fell, Right? Where there was a consciousness fall, he must rise again. And what we see even in certain spiritualities is that attempt, you know, to return from where one is fallen. Interesting Sambo. Look at the Sambo. You know what I mean? Look at that. There's the Sambo. <laughs> right? Sambhu Sambo, the black god. Right? That whole Sambo connection. Right? So there is a connection worldwide with we, the black people. You know, we're not dismissing that right there. But when one want to say that, well, Rastafari comes from India and from, you know, influences, yes. Of course, there's certain influences, but we have to be more kind of academic, more scholarly, you know, and present the facts and the data, you know, concerning, you know, what influence what. You know, and the more stronger influences were the influences coming from the East, speaking about Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, you know, and also Africa and the revolutionary. We see the whole Rastafari tribe, you know what I mean? Basically focusing squarely on that as the music, for example, which is the big, the roots, the roots reggae, as the roots reggae music, right, is a good testimony to. You know, and we could go into black people's presence all over the world. You know what I mean? It's not so much whether, you know, we was influenced by this or that, but how many other ones are influenced by us and have been influenced, you know, by us, you know, and our ancient cultures. You know, African or Ethiopian kings who rule India that have been erased from history. You know what I mean? So even our rising up with the king of kings of Ethiopia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, has helped to bring, you know, freedom and more consciousness, right, and community to even other peoples, others of our peoples in a universal sense. So anyway, brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers right here, you know, we can go on on this for a moment, 
you know but suffice it to say right here right now we're gonna seal up on this right here you know the whole connection right here get into a little more details got a couple of pages in the presentations to present but once again the question is on the beam on you know do rasta does rasta you know um come from right hinduism or influenced right but the key is the roots of rastafari a little bit more we're going to unpack some of what we just kind of just briefly you know, just share the reasonment right here with ones and ones right now. And hopefully we'll have an opportunity to vibes and get into some more of the details. I know many ones have questions. We said that actually Rastafari, that like the divinity of his majesty was manifest in Ethiopia as Rastafari. And we have this from churchical writings, you know, Mawades, you know, Wadase, praise, sonnets. You know, we start to read the translations of them and we can clearly see in the dating of these documents too, back into the 20s. We all know that many accredit the Rastafari movement officially, you know, at least in the West with 1930. But we see the light actually coming from the lightning, lightning from the East and shining to the West. So Shalom, Habarim, Shalom, Salam to Tenayest Alin, Wendemay, Wendemot, Shehitoch.